Hey folks, welcome back to the EDM studio. Today I'm going to be talking about ring modulation and amplitude modulation. And I'm really excited for this video because I know that the last video was a little bit dry and probably difficult to follow and maybe not as interesting as some of my other videos. But this is what put the, puts that to use. And the effects of it are really cool. You can get this kind of metallic techno sound from the late 90s and I have a feeling that that sounds starting to make a little bit of a comeback and it's really neat to actually understand what's going on there and then how you can tweak these parameters to really get the sound that you want. So the concept behind modulation is pretty simple. When, when I say modulation all I really mean is that we are going to control some signal with another signal. In this case we're going to modulate by multiplying the signals together. And that's the key distinguishing factor of ring modulation and amplitude modulation versus other types of modulation. So the way that the block diagram looks is we have this input signal, and that might be the signal that just comes out of your synth. We have a modulating signal, which is the thing that we're going to control the signal with. And then the output is just those two signals multiplied together. Visually, in the time domain, it looks like this. So we have our input signal that's in the audible range, and it's oscillating, doing this thing. The modulating signal, in this case, I'm going to say is, much, um, is at a much lower frequency, so low frequency oscillator compared to the input. And what it does is it actually acts as sort of an envelope on your signal. So you can see here that the amplitude is high when the modulating signal is high, but then as the modulating signal goes to zero, so does the amplitude of your input. And the result is that you get kind of this, um, this almost a gating sound on your signal. But what happens if this modulating signal is actually at a frequency that's close to your input signal? And that's where the sidebands come in, and that's where things get really interesting. So, so again, this is the kind of slow world, and this is where it acts as a, either a tremolo or a gate on your signal. This is the rest of the picture, and this is where you get that really cool metallic sound. So let's say that your input signal has this frequency response, and remember from my video on complex signals, we know that now you can have a, uh, a signal that has a positive frequency component and a negative frequency component. And these are always going to add such that you end up with a purely real signal. Because after all, in the end, at, at the end of the day, we end up with a signal that exists in the real world. So it's centered at what we're going to call W0. And then our modulator is, for now, and this should look familiar, this is just a cosine, right? So it has frequency content at what we're calling N0, and both a positive and a negative one. Now, what happens when you modulate by multiplying the signals? So when you multiply the signals in the time domain, it means that in the frequency domain, we're going to do this mathematical operation called convolution. I'll link to a doc on what this means, but essentially what it is is you flip your signal, and then you drag it along against your other signal, multiplying and taking the area of the two at any given point. And the result is that we end up with this interesting thing where you get sidebands that are separated from your original signal point. So this is the output of modulating these. You get one sideband that is shifted up M0 and one sideband that is shifted down M0 from your original um, frequency. And then actually, by the way, let me just draw this in real quick. you also get the negative equivalent. So there's also something down here uh, that looks the same way. And this is centered around negative W0. And then, like this picture, it's also uh, plus or minus M0 from that point. But what's really cool is, like, basically by modulating the signal, we can move it around in frequency. And not only that, but we get two copies of it at two different frequencies. In some cases, the sound is really dissonant, but you can kind of tune it to make it sound a little bit more musical. 
In some cases, you actually want that dissonant sound. So this is ring modulation. And uh, let's take a quick look at amplitude modulation and then dive into logic and see what this can actually sound like in the real world. All right, so what is the difference between ring modulation and amplitude modulation? I've updated our picture to reflect an amplitude modulation. And the only difference is this DC component. So we add a DC component to the modulating signal. The result is that now the modulating signal oscillates between, say, 1 and 0, as opposed to 1 and negative 1. And the result of that is that when we're using it as a tremolo or envelope effect, it is actually behaving as an envelope rather than modifying the signal itself. Remember, in the ring modulation case, as the modulating signal goes negative, it actually would change the phase of the signal. But now, it's just behaving as a simple envelope on the input signal. So in the time domain, what is the effect? And the real effect is that by adding this DC component, now we add this peak of energy here at 0 hertz. So when you do the convolution, you still get the sidebands from each of the, um, each of the sidebands of the cosine function. But we also get another one that is still centered at W0 and is the same amplitude as the original signal. Remember, this, these sidebands are at half the amplitude, but uh, with a amplitude modulation, the original signal remains at W0. And that has some interesting implications. The big one is that this is used for AM radio, and by adding that DC component, we can, uh, assuming, assuming a band with limited signal, um, meaning that when you tune your dial on your radio, you, you specify a particular frequency and you're not going to get other radio channels bleeding into your signal, you can recreate the original signal. All right, so that is ring modulation and amplitude modulation on kind of the engineering side. Let's take a look at it in logic and see what it sounds like.